Right guys, what you see in front of you is the, it's called the Round Table Crossroads. And it's called that because apparently there's something here called the Round Table, which is an ancient monument, Neolithic. Yeah, maybe it's that tumulus there. I don't know, I'll have to, I say Maria Wheatley knows this sort of thing, that's her speciality. It's not mine, but I'm interested in it, of course. And um, the, the good news is I've managed to break my long radio silence. I was just up, just up the road here. I managed to get a signal up to up to two up to two bars actually, and um, got received some, received and sent some text messages. I've had no major no uh, sort of panic messages from home, which means yeah, I've got no reason to think there's any problems with my family. So that's the main thing. They got my mood. I think they could probably get me on the emergency number anyway. Just uh, I was just checking on the crossover now. Lovely evening, isn't it? It's come up to, it's close to 8 pm now, I haven't checked. But uh, yeah, the nice little evening walk. Um, uh, this is the last leg of my journey back to Erie Cushlin um, on this road before I, go, before I get to the driveway to Erie Cushlin. So um, and here it is, this is the, somewhere here, something called the Round Table. Hello, so uh, yeah, very nice. And there's dry stone walls. <coughs> As I said before, it's a dying art. There's only a handful of people left who know how to make them. Most of them are very old, although uh, I know someone younger who says they can make them. But it is a great skill. And I've seen lots of these dry stone walls on the Isle of Man, which is lovely. Anyway, thinking of a title, what should I call this video? I think it probably uh, of Mongoose and Man. You know, the best, you know, the best place, you know that phrase, the best laid plans of mice and men, I thought, maybe. The best laid plans of mongoose and men is a little bit long. Just mongoose and men. Of mongoose and men. Something like that. And it's a pun on the Isle of Man and mongoose. And so it's of mice. Alright guys, so turn left here. And uh, head back to the Airy Cushlin. You can see that mist is now descending on uh, Crunkney Airy La, which it does quite regularly. I filmed it before. I'm quite glad I wasn't up there when that happened. And so I returned to Airy Cushlin on this evening that has really brightened up actually. And so the sun's come out and this uh, clouds have cleared a little bit. And uh, well, this is my. Uh, it's my, not my second last night. My last night is Monday night. So it is, yeah, because uh, tomorrow's Monday, so this is my second last night on the Isle of Man. Uh, tomorrow's my last full day on the Isle of Man. Um, and, wow, well, I'll say more on it when it's the end, but you know, this house, just to say about this house, <laughs> it hasn't lived up to its spooky and creepy appearance. The impression I got at the beginning when I first arrived here last week is actually not true it's um, nothing spooky or weird or sp anything like that has happened to me during the time i've been staying here nothing um and even though someone in the in the guest book wrote down that they said they heard things going bump in the night and um, i certainly haven't i've heard nothing really except some of the other snoring that's it really <laughs> So there's some horrible flies around here in the evening. Uh, they're not quite so bad here because it's a bit of a breeze. But um, when I was going through the woods, I had to pull my hood up, you know, cover my head because these I don't think they're biters, it's annoying. And so uh, they just, uh, they're everywhere, can you probably hear them? And so, uh, yeah, I've had a good evening out and tomorrow there's going to be more. I'm going to be going somewhere else tomorrow. So we'll see what else we then. Right. This is probably the loveliest sunset we've had here. Um, it really is. I hope the um, I hope this camera conveys the textures and colours of what I'm seeing right now. And in the distance, you can see the mountains more on there. That's in Ireland, in Northern Ireland, to be precise, to County Down. Oh, look at that! And there's a ship. I think that might be Magsman. No, it's not. It's funnel's too small. There's a ship out there. See. Lovely, beautiful stuff. It feels a bit colder than it did earlier. And uh, here is the ship. It's actually a ship considerably larger than Maxima. It's Celebrity Apex. A passenger ship. She registered whatever flag 
how convenient that particular country is. So, and there she is, you see. Um, let's see if I can just show you where, where I found her. See, there we are. Um, and it's difficult to do this with one hand because I don't have a bloody mouse. But anyway, you see there, there's the coast of Northern Ireland. And if you go like that, we're here. So we're over here. Oops. Let's just zoom out a little bit. We're here on here. We're in this part of Isle of Man. So sorry, there we go. Sorry, I wasn't looking. But anyway, this is the ship here, Celebrity Apex, an edge class cruise ship, operated by Celebrity Cruise Con Constru and uh, Royal Caribbean Cruises. There we go. All right. Hmm. There she is. Built in France, apparently. Pretty big, yeah. The edge class cruise ships. I, don't know, I won't go into details now, but you know, I love ships in the sea, you know. Maltese, that's their flag of convenience anyway, they probably just changed. To the Maltese cross there, very esoteric. Hmm. And we spotted her today, that's quite something. I forgot to look up where she was heading, Come on, let's have a look. There we go. And she's heading for... Cork. Yeah, there we are, so that's quite something, that's where she's going to go. I've been to Cork, it's lovely. Good morning everyone, it's uh, Monday morning. This is my last full day on the Isle of Man. And uh, so I'm going to head off and do a little bit of exploring on my own today again. But I didn't I never showed you where I went last night. I did say I would show you where I went, so I will now do that. <coughs> so this, this is Erie Cushion. This, this map, this part of the map shows all of the south, south, southern end of the Isle of Man. Um, there we are, where we are there, Erie Cushion. And, what I did yesterday was I went along this track, I went up there and I went along this track, this white track here to there, and then I went up, I went up Crotney Arila to the top there, and I came back down again. I walked along this, these roads here, that's where I picked up my phone signal in this basic area here, and back along here to, and down the road to Airy Cushion. I'm going a different route today. Um, I'm going to go different, I'm, I've got plans to do today, and I feel, I feel, I feel very drawn to do something today. I feel very... I feel... I feel called to do a certain thing today. And um, I'll show you what... I'll, one of those things, I'll show you what they are. Um, <clears throat> so I'm leaving... I'm leaving there, going up this time. I'm going up to the junction there with these, this crossroads. But this time I'm taking a left down this, this track here, the black dotted line. <clears throat> now unfortunately on Ordnance Survey maps, the black dotted line means a track of any description. As you, for example, the black dotted line going up Conkney Arila was what, as you know, if you, when you saw it, it's simply a completely unprocessed walking route with just nothing but stones and rocks and things like that. Uh, for example, a red, a red path, a red, um, this red line is a proper public footpath so it should be maintained better. The black dot like could be any track, anything. Usually something unsuitable for motors. I'm going to go along there, um, down that hill there, and then into this area here, Craigamore, and then I'm going to go along there to the main road. Now I'm going to go down and have a look at um, here, at uh, Niabel. I'm curious to see Niabel because everyone's talking about it. Well, do you remember one of the compartments on the Ben McCree ferry ship was called was called the Niabel Lounge? And so I'm curious to see it. Then I'm going to come up here to Dolby. <coughs> And I'm going to visit, there's a little church there, you see, you see a little cross, that's a church. No solid shape means no steeple, no steeple or tower. That's the Irving's church, I'm going to go there, and I'm going to walk along here, the main road. There may be, a, hopefully there'll be a, hopefully there'll be a, a pavement along there, until I get to Glen May. This lovely little place, we've seen Glen May before, where the hotel was, the windmill, wind, the waterfall hotel. And then I'm going to send to Dory Cashlin, so a Dorish, Dorish Cashin, up this track here, which was in that video, I should, the video about the guy who goes there. And I feel very, very compelled to do that. I feel I feel an enormous calling to do that today. Once I get there, I will probably simply, I don't know what I will do. Um, I may do the full, I may go back down again, I may do the full circuit and just come back by the path we used the other day. To the, uh, to the main road and then back down to Erie Cushion. I estimate it take, probably take five, five to six hours, this whole walk. Because especially because I'm not going to rush. If I rushed it, I could do it quicker, but I'm not going to rush. I'm going to take my time and enjoy it. So it's, and it, the weather forecast today is very good. Sunny weather, winds 4 to 14 miles per hour. Um, which would be good for the other guys, because the other guys are all going on a boat trip around the Calf of Man here. 
It's the island here. Um, I'd love to, I'd, you know, and I'm, I'm loath not to be with them, but because um, I'd, I'd enjoy that myself. But there's only one day left, and I feel this is very important what I'm going to do today. And this here is the crossroads here, and look, 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 look at uh, Cronk up there, completely shrouded in mist. See, that could have been me yesterday up there in the midst of all that. Okay, so this is the crossroads, and now I'm heading down towards uh, Nyabel. The fly, did I show you the flies last night? I can't remember. Um, but I came, when I was walking up here, I mean, I'd, probably I was just so flustered I didn't even bother to get the camera out, so I apologise for that. I did do some filming, I might mention the flies. But walking past this wood, obviously if you're in it, even more so, this spooky wood where Ooblis's paradox applies, or you can just see a little bit of bright light at the end. Um, this is the wood where they put the trail cams, well, one of them. Um, I was surrounded by flies, thousands of them, all over me. Um, and they weren't biters, there's nothing, it's not that bad, they weren't mosquitoes or midges, but they were very irritating. <coughs> especially when they got near my mouth and nose, there's one there. Especially when they got near my mouth and nose. And so I felt, and so I basically put my hood up and was waving my hand in front of my face like that to get rid of them. Um, there's a few still here, maybe they come out more in the evening. But, uh, yeah, they're little bastards. Um, and, well, maybe it's a good sign, you know, because it's like... Maybe it's a good sign. And it's like... You know, the insect population has plummeted, as you know, in much of the world. Which is very worrying, actually, in terms of the natural uh, order of things. Insects are vital in the food chain. Without them, life couldn't exist. And, uh, well, you know, how often do you get moths and things now in the cities? But there's a moth. Be <laughs> there was a moth in my room, which I actually let out the window um, the other day, and um, one was trying to get in yesterday. So maybe that's a good sign. Maybe it's a sign that the ecosystem here on the Isle of Man is not as damaged as it is in much of the rest of the world. Certainly, the rest of Britain, which is a good sign. Oh, yeah, I think there are flies now crawling on the camera. You might see one crawling on the lens. Yeah, but they're, they're, they're much. There's much fewer now than there were. Then there's certainly much fewer now than there were. Um, Last night, really, they were swarming around me like nobody's. There's no tomorrow. There's still quite a few, even now. You know, you'll see one crawling on the lens probably in a minute. Uh, so yeah, but anyway, it's a downhill run now to that uh, place uh, near Eobel. Can't remember what it's called. Um, Got to be, you know, things are deceptive here on the Isle of Man in terms of settlements, because um, when you see a village or hamlet, that usually means just one house. A town is like a, t a little village by, by UK standards. And oh, get out of the way, the lens. Here we are. And uh, well, that must make Dub Douglas and Ramsey, therefore, must be kind of like super metropolises. Anyway, guys, gonna. The flies seem to be focused more on the woods. When you move away from the woods, they tend to they tend to go away more. I mean, like when I was walking back, when I was walking back, when I cleared the forest and I was on the track down to here at Cushlin, they've kind of gone away so hopefully they will this time there's far fewer of them now than there were last night okay i've got my there's no rain forecast but i've got my waterproof in here just in case you never know when you might need it so uh yeah that's uh that's what's next on my list it's a very steep downhill walk this is in fact it's so steep it's one of those ones where i sort of I kind of look forward to when it goes back up again um this is a beautiful, there's a, there's a coastal plain here, which you saw on the map, and down there is a Nyabil, which I'll be visiting soon. Apparently there's not much to see there these days, but I'm still going to go and visit it. And yeah, it's, uh, it's there's a little farm, there's farms here, and uh, little paddocks, where there's some horses over there, so it's a lovely little spot. So, and I've got my earphones out for the first time since I've been here. I'm just to listen to them. I didn't use them at all on last night's walk. I just went without just listening to the ambient sounds around me. I decided to uh, listen to my earphones on this walk. But who am I listening to? Of course, it's how to use the unexplained. It's got to be something appropriate, hasn't it? So here we go then, guys. Here we are. The flies have eased off a bit, but look how steep this look how steep this track is. And it seems to be just all rock. It's um this is clearly like a a temporary stream bed. It's like when it rains, this, pro this may well be like full of water. Oh, it would therefore be unpassable. But yeah, I'm just 
making my way down here ends in a minute. Oh, so, just got to be very careful when you go down here. Mm. Nice tree, isn't it? Okay, guys, I'm on the other side now, going uphill. You see, the road going uphill is a far better quality than the one going downhill. So the reason I'm doing this is because the flies have come back. I just don't want to, <laughs> they're, they're irritating my ears and my neck. I just don't want to breathe any in. Probably I say it's a good sign of a healthy ecosystem, but bloody annoying right now, I tell you. So, uh, another traditional Manx architecture there. And we're head, I'm now going to head, eventually get to the main road near Dolby. Welcome to Dolby, everyone. <coughs> I made it to the main road, survived the coastal track. I'm now we're going to walk along here. So obviously, there's no pavement so far. I'm just keeping in wherever approaching traffic happens. We walk in the direction of the approaching traffic, which is uh, what they say, oncoming traffic. So, um, there's some boats out on the sea, and we're going to go down to Nyabel. Okay, so we're on the road now down towards Nyabel, and we have a change in architecture. For example, this here, that particular gable with the two angles, that's very Dutch in its style. That blue house up there has the traditional Manx architecture. Um, big thick chimney gables, no windows on the side of the house. Tall narrow windows, thick walls, it's, it's very traditional Manx. And that, see up there, that, I think that's Crockney Airy La, which I've left behind. I'm looking at it from a much lower angle now, because Airy Cushling is actually quite high up. I think someone said it was 400 feet above sea level. And they're heading down the road towards Nyabil, so we're getting close to sea level now. There's Brad ahead in the distance, you can just see. There you go. And the flies, well, there's still a few flies around, but they've eased off a lot. I think the wind actually keeps them off. Uh, the wind, actually, is very a good fly deterrent. I think it's why there were so many of them around me earlier, because it was just not very windy. Um, so there's a car coming here. Still no pavements, but no, it's safe enough to walk along the road as long as you keep in, keep out of the way. And there's a magpie. Magpie, magpie, where's your wife? I just saw a magpie there, yeah. The rare, very common birds in Oxford. I've only seen two or three here on the Isle of Man. But I saw a hare as well. I saw a hare in the woods near uh, when, when we left, just after I was filming on the, on the track, on the coastal track. So they're quite common. The sea looks lovely today, it really does. Well, welcome to Nyabil, everyone. I've come down this road here, and um, this is Nyabil, which is spoken of in almost mystical terms on the Isle of Man. It's like, it reminds me of that book, The Beach, where everyone talks about the beach. <laughs> um, down here, if you, if you take a little bit of a look at Nyabil, it's actually a pretty spot, but there's not a lot to see here. There's this rock, there's this rocky little islet here. You've got like a there's a little cafe, I'll have a cup of tea in a minute, up there. And um, you get a lovely view of the sea. This is close I've been to, this is actually the closest I've been to the sea so far. No, no, that's not true. Peel Beach, I went on, I was on Peel Beach. But uh, coming down here, it's a lovely spot actually. You, you get the view here, in the distance you see, right ahead. And then you come around here, we should be able to see Eric Cushlin actually, because you can see this from Eric Cushlin. And um, where is it? Let's have a look. Look, there's a little bench, you know where they put the benches for the best views. Look at the coastline here, it's amazing. Somewhere behind those rocks there, Eric Cushlin is. But come down here, there's like a, there's like a kind of a big. You can smell the sea actually. You can smell the rocks and the sea. The seaweed is kind of like it's. You can smell it. It's nice here. It reminds me of parts of Wales. And down here, there's like some kayaks there. I think this is like a a water sports centre, something like that. That's what it looks like to me. Nice. Yeah, there's a little hut there with kayaks. Oh, there's a little thatched cottage. They're making thatch, uh, thatch in that cottage down there. Very nice. 
This is now, Bill. Smells lovely here. Looks lovely. Oh, well, last couple's that plan then. No worries, we'll go go find somewhere else. Gonna head back up to the main road now. Now, and we're in Dolby now, and approaching us through the trees is St. James's Church, Dolby. It's, uh, this, now this is the Irving's Church. This is where they, they went to worship every Sunday. Um, and so now, of course, we've changed enormously the Dolby hub. And, uh, like all churches, it's had to it's had to adapt with the times, which means it's had to sort of convert itself into a community centre. I even get a cup of tea in here, which would be nice. I need one of those. And um, lots of other things. You see plants for sale, the hub bunkhouse. And um, you come along here and you can see the signboard here. Um, the vicar practices meditation, so I'm guessing it's the Church of England, because they'll just do anything, won't they? <laughs> uh, the Parish of Patrick it is the Church of England, yeah. It's Cheryl Cousins is her name. And uh, there we are, and you can see a little bit. We'll go in there and have a look. You can have a little, you can sleep there, you see. Nice. Large living space. Hmm, nice. There's actually accommodation in there too. I say, you know, in the Fair Trade Church, that's nice. I mean, the old days, you see. Um, hello, all right. Churches were like full to the brim. Like everyone would be sitting side by side in the, in the fuse today. It's but very, very different. Even on the, even in a remote area like the Isle of Man, you know, religion has taken its taken its time. This is the this is the that made Jackie laugh. Toilet available. Yeah. Of course, they have they have they've had to change all the time. So we'll go in there and have a look. Nice. This is the first thing that greets you when you come through the door. Welcome. Free film. Help yourself tea and coffee in the flapjacks if you want. Leave a donation if you please. Could you please put it in the honesty box if you want to leave a donation, which I will, of course. Milk should be in the fridge, and there we are, there's it. which I shall do shortly. Yes. I'll just show you the rest of it for you. When you come through here, do you, you see this is, this is symptomatic of how churches have changed. This area is essentially like a, this is like a, looks like some kind of counselling circle. But you can buy souvenirs, there's DVDs and CDs, all these lovely things here. I'm not sure I want, I want any more souvenirs. You can also pick up books if you want. You know, I love to like books myself, as you know. I might have a quick look through them, although I don't think I've got room in my bag for any more. And this front bit is the is the actual church as it has been, as it was originally, and has been left as it was. Just a small part of this particular building. This is the only part of this entire building that Jim, Margaret and Voiry Irving would recognise and remember. It's lovely, I like the timber and everything. Nice benches and stuff, so I think I'll go and have myself a cup of tea because I'm a bit hot and thirsty. Yeah, um, this is what Big Stacked would do. So, am I doing on this expedition? I left early Cushion, Cushlin, went up to the crossroads. That black track is the big downhill bit with all the flies, and then. Um, uh, there's a little road there leading up to, that's very steep there you can see, to the main road. Go down there and there is Niarborne. I've come back up and that little cross, that little cross there is the church. You can just see now I think. That little cross there. And the next step is to go along this road here to Glen May. And then um, head up on this track here to Dornish Cash. And I think I'll probably just do the whole circuit. Come back the way I did last time. But I'm nearly almost, I'm almost halfway around already which is good. I actually have I've deliberately selected my Manx money. I have to use up my Manx money before tomorrow. As I've said before, it's, I bang my head on that doorway. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Um, it's not legal tender in the UK, um, even though it is on parity in terms of exchange rates. So, uh, so I've deliberately selected my Manx coins to give as a donation. I have another cup. Of. We're interesting toilet here in the church. It has a, a view. You can see that where they're doing the roof of the house. 
and it has this thing here, twinned. This toilet has been twinned by St James Church Dolby with a latrine and South Sedan. I thought that was a joke, but look closer. It's actually a serious third world relief charity initiative. Yeah. Even the church now and heading northwards towards Glen May. Um, the weather's actually improved. It's like, it's a bit breezy. It's actually not so quite so hot now as it was with the breeze. It's actually quite hot in that coastal road. And you can see the, the lovely scenery here. And um, that's interesting, that church. The church is actually part of the, it's actually the, represents the Bishop Patrick. The, sorry, it's called, not the Bishop Rick. The, as I say, Bishop Rick. All bishops are pricks, aren't they? Um, the, the parish of Patrick, which is part of the diocese on the Isle of Man is covered by a single diocese called the Diocese of Sodor and Man. Now the name so when you hear the name Sodor, that may start you thinking. Because if like most children in the world these days, because it's not just in England, you have uh, been ever been a fan of the Thomas the Tank Engine books by Reverend W. A. Low Lowry, <coughs> sorry Audrey, Reverend W. A. Audrey, you will know that. Uh, let's keep in. And this should be on the other side of the road, really. You'll know that uh, these books that were written sometime in the sometime in the 1920s, I think they were written, are uh, set on an island called Sodor. And I'm starting to put two and two together now. And if I, when I check this up, I wouldn't be surprised to find it's true. Following my little trip yesterday on the steam railway, which used to be far more extensive, it used to, there used to be a, almost a circular network. <clears throat> there was a track that went westwards towards the sort of Peel area. And, and southwards along this, this coast here, dismantled rail, we used to go north up to near where that church was. Uh, that Audrey, who was a churchman, who was in the clergy, he knew about the, the, the diocese of Sodor and Man, actually rode on those railways, probably when he was a little kid. I mean, they'd been running since 1870. He, um, so he probably ran, well, he probably rode on those railways and was inspired to write the Thomas the Tank Engine books based on what, having that same experience we did, experiencing those railways, seeing those trains, all have names like Kissack and things like that, they all have names, these trains, these, uh, these uh, little, uh, these little engines. And now so, imagine, imagine them with personalities, faces on the, on the, on the boiler fronts and things like that. And so he eventually created these stories. And you have Thomas the Tank Engine, um, with Annie and Clarabelle, the coaches, and the trucks, <laughs> the fat controller, the thin controller, Gordon, James the Red Engine, and there's that duck. He was the one with the big square boiler, I remember. And I, I wouldn't be surprised, and of course, he, he called the island Sodor, but it was meant to symbolize the Isle of Man and the railways, the railway network of the Isle of Man. It's a little, so sure. It's about a mile and a half to Glen May, which is uh, where I'm going to start the next stage of my little journey, my little adventure today. I've been intrigued by that little tower. Now, it's marked on the map, it's just called a tower, but that is actually the headland above Peel. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's where you go over there and you get to Peel. It's kind of like uh, everything's sort of within view of itself here. It's really amazing, so uh, really quite something. Anyway, I'll carry on along here. I just thought there's one person, or one name associated with the Isle of Man, very famously, which I have not seen, not heard of, no one knows anything about, <coughs> and that is Yoko Ono. Um, Yoko Ono lives here, somewhere. Don't know where exactly. Um, she lives somewhere on this island and has done ever since John got shot. So, yeah, 1980 when John got shot, she decided immediately to retire from public life. I mean, she still does her artwork, I think, but uh, she no longer wanted to be in the limelight anymore. She had been very much when she was married to John and suffering from grief at losing John, of course, as well. She uh, sold the flat in New York City and moved here to the Isle of Man and has been here ever since. And has, from what I gather, she's barely left. Um, 
she may have gone to visit her relatives in Japan or something, I don't know. Apparently she's related to a Japanese aristocracy. Um, but anyway, if I bump into her, I'll let you know and I'll try and get an interview. You know something, I'm uh, really impressed with, thank you. I'm really impressed, one thing that really impresses me about the Isle of Man, right, is the politeness and civility and professionalism of the Manx driver. You know, they, the, these roads, I mean, there are no motorways on the Isle of Man. I haven't even seen a dual carriageway. Just, these are like the biggest roads you get, these kind of A roads. Um, there's a lot of them all over. It's a good road network here. Um, but people, people drive, even though there's no, there's actually no official speed limit on this road. People drive far more sedately than they do, I think, in the UK, from my experience. They're also more considerate. I've not seen any horn lashing and things like that. I've not... Funnily enough, I've not yet seen a traffic jam, and that could simply do with the way the road network is... The road network is perfectly adequate to handle... to handle the traffic level we have. Here's some motorbikes. As I said, loads of motorbikes here. Lots of motorbikes on the Isle of Man. Uh, I've seen quite a few of those. But uh, the cars, you know, they move into sort of overtaking position. The cars, um, the number of cars, like, when I'm, I'm walking along here, correctly according to the highway code, facing the oncoming traffic, you know, half the cars, they actually overtake. And sometimes they, sometimes they even indicate. And when I do that, I always wave to say thank you. Because, you know, in the UK, you just have to press yourself against the hedge, at least certainly around Oxford. You have to literally press yourself against the hedge as they thunder past, as if you're not there. You know, I'm like, I've got black on, but I've got my white bag in my left hand. So it makes me easier to see. You know, I'm also at the end of the road anyway, but uh, I've yet to come anyone come across any driver on the Isle of Man that does that. Now you've seen this this bit before, because I filmed it from a car from a car before. This lovely little this lovely little hamlet in the in this sort of like bend in the road is called Glen May, and uh, there's a themselves bridge as well, and I always greet themselves when I cross it. And there's a farmer there in his little car, his little little, little car there. And um, of course the hotel you've seen, the waterfall hotel, the waterfall inn, what's left of it, it's, it's actually shut now. Um, <coughs> apparently there was another hotel along here that's been demolished and apparently I think Captain Dennis or someone stayed there. Um, so that's gone now apparently. I think it might even have been up near Neabel. Um Janet was talking about it. So uh, we've now we're now going to head for the next the place where we come off the road and begin the next part of our journey. Right, we are now in Glen May, and this is I assume Glen means the same as it does in in uh, Scots Gaelic. A Glen meaning a valley. It's actually it's actually an English word. It's been, it's been borrowed by English, and you can see this is a lovely valley here some forest on that side. This side of the hill, you see how steep it is? See how steep and high that hill is there on, right? On It's actually on the, the one on this side, which according to the map is just a side you'll see in a minute. But look, this is, this is Bend in the Road, which you've seen before we filmed this from a car. There's a little monkey puzzle through here, isn't it? Look how steep and twisty that road is. See, how, there's that high hill there. Very high, and there's a steep hill. There's a steep path behind it. Well, uh, hmm. well, guess what, guys? We're going up there. Oh, yeah, this is Sound Road. Very, can't pronounce that. But anyway, um, Sound Road. There we go. This is actually the the start of the road that leads to Doris Cavern from the other direction and uh, we're gonna head we're gonna take it now although it's not gonna be this nice all the way I can tell you it's, uh, see it's marked as a public footpath so and there's it's a cul-de-sac because you can't get vehicles very far down here so let's head off well we've not gone very far but it's really charming I mean it has this it has this lovely stream here Good. It's a crafted stream bed it reminds me, of, I know I mentioned it before, but I mentioned Neil Gunn's book, The Well at the World's End. That's what it, that's what it actually looks like. And these houses are lovely. It's really charming. 
Okay, I thought the path might go up through here, but this seems to be the driveway to that house. The house is not marked on the map. And it seems like this road heads off here. And I remember this, I think, from the, the video, even the broken gate. And it says here, public footpath, unsuitable for motors. And there's a, I mean, you couldn't get a dirt bike up there. And there's a warning there, very steep hazardous section, approximately two kilometers ahead. Proceed with care, yeah. Right, so that's what I'm gonna do. But this is where I have to go now. I told you it got a lot worse, and um, I have to go up up this pathway, so I'm just going to nip in, I'm going to start heading up now. Um, like I said, if you want advice about coming to the Isle of Man, um, wow, it's spooky. It's, like, it's quite atmospheric actually, I'm not going to take my time going up here, the ground is very rough. Advice about coming to the Isle of Man, um, first thing, sturdy shoes, very sturdy, these are my work boots, which I've just, brought. they're brand new, I'm kind of, this is kind of a wearing them in period. And they've certainly been worn in. Um, that's a really thing you really need most of all, I think. Um, so, uh, oh, that's like, there's like these, there's these sod hedges which are quite common here on the Isle of Man. Um, and just think that this really, considering that you, if you remember we went past the waterfall in in Glen May, I can't, I can't show it you now, but I've shown it you before, and there's a bus stop next to it. This was the only way the Irving family could actually access the outside world. If you come, you see, this is the pathway, and it probably hasn't changed much actually in the last century. Um, this is the pathway that Voyery and her family used to get from their home to the rest of the world. Um, we've been to her church, they must have walked along that same stretch of road that I did. And um, Voyery School was there too, and I don't know. I don't know if I don't think that school's still there, but um, yeah, they used to go at least, probably at least once a day. The family, probably certainly Voyery and her father, would have to come up and down this track, the one that I'm using now. So I'm not going to complain one little bit about however difficult this is, because I'm only, I only have to do this once. Um, there's a, the new edition of the original Haunt, Haunting of of the haunting of what's it called the haunting of Dolly's Cashin or something. It was the original book written by Harry Price and E. Lambert. It's just been re-released, there's a new edition just come out, forward by Chris Josephy, the author of Jeff, the new book. And uh, its subtitle is a, a story of isolation and poverty. And it's true, poverty was for real. I mean, as you know, the you know the Hervings were not were not successful farmers. And um, in the end Jim had to sell off a lot of his land actually to simply put food on the table of Dor the Dornish Cashin house. Isolation, yeah, isolation is another thing. I mean, they, they lived a life which is almost unknown to people now. You see, oh, there's a little bit of a stream here. Probably when the, I bet you when uh, I've heard that in rainy weather you can't walk up here without Wellingtons or even waders. <laughs> um, isolation because they were, they were isolated in a way that very few people would understand today. Because it's not just that they were on the, on the Isle of Man itself, which is an isolated, close society. This island, which is quite a remote island in the Irish Sea, a large but remote island. Um, but also they, they lived, even by Manx standards, they lived isolated lives. Their houses, I say, this is the, this is the principle way that they access their house. I mean, the track we use, the one that I'm going to go down, because we went the other day, is actually not, uh, it's not so convenient because it just takes you up by Erie Cushlin, there's no bus stop there. Um, so, this was literally, whoops, oh, yeah, I see, you can really trip over on around here. Um, you can actually see that, uh, even by Manx standards, their lives are incredibly isolated. Incredibly. Um, so, it's getting more mushy underfoot, actually. So, um, and remember, they didn't have electricity at their house. There was none of the ways of getting, no television or radio. Well, they might have had a ba battery powered radio, I don't know. Um, no television. I don't know they TVs in those days. They'd just been invented. Um, they were luxury items in the 30s. Um, but they, they had no telephone either, so they wouldn't even know what was going on outside their farm until they headed down this really bumpy track. This probably hasn't changed much 
since they lived up here. Oh, the bloody flies have started again. Um, they would only find out what's been going on in the world when they went down here to Glen May and Dolby. So yeah, I'm gonna... It's actually a stiff... It's gonna be a difficult walk. But uh, when, when it come out, when we arrive, we just go back the way we came the other day. So once I'm at Dawlis Cash, and it should be, the rest should be quite easy. Well, guys, this is a bit annoying. I've come to a junction that's not mentioned, not, not marked on the map or mentioned in records. Uh, that way leads to the field. Um, there's that track goes up there, and there's this one that goes up here. I've got a feeling I've got to go that way because let's see where this one goes quickly. <coughs> I don't think this one leads anywhere. No, I think it is the other one. But, um, this little alcove with a wall. I just inhaled a fly. Uh, luckily it didn't go down the wrong way. It went... I've eaten a fly. So... <laughs> I've done what Klaus Schwab wants. I've eaten the bugs. Or at least one bug. Um, and they're crawling over the camera now again. So uh, it's up that way. And... Um, yeah, so... Uh, I think that one doesn't really go anywhere, so uh, here we go. I'm gonna have to stop. I'm gonna put on my fly protection kit now, I think. Okay, we come to this. I don't think this is a junction. I see, I'm going to stop myself eating more flies. <coughs> I think this is just a field, so it's not, it's not a pathway. But it's, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, I'll go. Uh, I think it's this one I've got to take, you know. It goes downhill for a bit, but it must go uphill again in a minute. Right. Okay, so here we are. Right. Pathway still very bumpy and wet. There we go. Oh, dear. Some holly there. Don't want to get spiked. Right. right. I'm right in the boonies now, look at this. I actually can't hardly see the pathway, I've turned all over it. I don't think many people come down this way, obviously. But if, if am I going the wrong way, I wonder? Um, anyway, it seems to have opened out a bit now, but... Uh, you see, I've checked the other crossroads and they don't actually go a different way. If I come across a real crossroads and I'm really lost, I'll just have to check both branches. Yeah. Guys, uh, it's a bit more open now. There's a stream crosses the path here, or vice versa. It's a warning, very steep section. Um, it's almost impassable. And you saw there was a couple of there's a couple of spots like that where the ferns were just covering the path. You got to push through. At least they weren't thorny. There's a couple of thorns, thorny twigs, brambles and stuff. But uh, anyway, this is a warning for the very steep section. The map is clearly not accurate because the map portrays. There, on the map, the path is a straight line. In, in, on the, in reality, it actually twists quite a lot. So I think the surveyors just thought, sod it, we're not going up there to take measurements, just draw a straight line. We know where it goes in, we know where it comes out, leave it there. So now, this is the steep, very steep section coming up. So I'm going to take my time on this bit, not going to rush. Watch, watch, watch my step as I go along. But uh, I've come this far, I've, I've come this far, I'm going to get to the end. I don't know. So this is some sort of, you know, crampons and ropes kind of climb. But you know, this is a kind of is a little one way you have to use your hands for this bit. This is oh, I've come that far. Yeah. Can't be much further now. I just spot her and have a rest for a minute. Mm. So I think it's a slight. It's not as light the surface of the coastal road, but much steeper and more rugged. Uh, I almost had to get down on my hands and knees. Ah, somewhere the ghost of Voiry Irving is giggling at me. But uh, in a little while she's going to be nodding her head and clapping in appreciation. Nearly at the top now. Can't see exactly when it opens out, but I'm near the top. Look at that, quite a view. What a view. Back in the distance, I think it's Port St Mary or Port Erin, I'm not sure. This landscape is starting to look familiar as if I'm close to the top now. That has been quite a climb. Like Sisyphus, this never comes to an end. Um, I know more or less where I am because I recognise the view. See Port Erin, there's that tower on top of that hill. Uh, 
you know, and there's this slope here, which obviously is one side of the glen, but it just goes on and on and on, up and up forever. And it's ironic, because Richard Dawkins compared uh, basically workers like Hospital Portus to Sisyphus, patronising piece of shit that he was. Anyway, guys, opening out a little bit. I mean, I know it can't be much, it's got to come to an end sometime, but bloody hell, what a lot, man. Well, I've reached the gate, and there's the building there, which is marked on the map, at Dawlish Cashin. This is the gate you saw the other side. You saw the other side of this gate a couple of days ago, which means I've made it. I've made it. Yeah. What do you say now, eh, Voyery? <laughs> not such not such a wimp after all, am I? In a doorless cushion. There's that farm, new farm building that once marked on the map. There's the back, the remains of the back wall. Here's where the remains of the porches. The bushes. And up here the well. Hello to the ghosts of the Irving family. And there is the well. This is where we found the ship. And uh, if you don't know what I mean by that, please watch the rest of this video. And now, uh, I'm not going to hang around, I'm going to head back to Erie Cushland now, the way we came the other day, which is actually again very stony track, but compared to the way I've come, <laughs> it's, it, it's pure velvet and luxury. It's just up that way. That's the guy on a motorbike, him there. Um, I don't think he's trying to... I hope he's not trying to get down to Glenmay down the road I did. Bloody heck. Yeah. Look, the cronk now also has its mist around it as before. Yeah. But I've reached the main road. This is uh, the last station. I go along here and there's the road to Erie Cushlin along here. And it says the warning has the section. Yes. Not as hazardous as the other one, no. Let's get on no way. <laughs> Here we go then, guys. And here I am, back at Erie Cushlin. Look, it's as spooky as ever. Doesn't feel spooky now, though. Um, well, this well, the walk took actually a lot shorter time than I thought. I expected to be back about four. It's only just gone half two. So uh, the, others will be, the others will be back around five or six. And then we're going to have one last dinner out together before we go home. So I've got time to relax. Put my feet up, and I need to do have a cup of tea because I really need it after all that. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. One thing you should also do, I think, so I didn't, is take water with you. Take a bottle of water with you. Although, to be honest, uh, I only didn't take a bottle of water with me because I knew I'd be stopping for tea and stuff in the in the church. Either at night or the church, I knew I'd be stopping for a cup of tea and maybe walk get some water there. So I definitely take a bottle of water with you, definitely. Um, hmm. It's been good. And as I said, you know, I felt, I felt compelled to do that. I felt some, some, some inkling that said I had to do that. I had to go back to Dawlish Cash and, and I had to go that way. I just felt the need to. And everyone told me, I mean, it turns out, you know, people were telling me, you know, it's a very difficult walk, but it's more like a climb than a walk, and it is. I didn't have to actually get down on all fours and use my hands occasionally. It's hard, it's hard work, it's hard work. I did it quite quickly, got did it in about half an hour. Uh, probably better to do it a bit slower than I did, probably. But uh, if you're not an ex-hospital porter like me, of course. But um, the hospital porters are like Land Rovers. Nothing gets in the way of us. So I'm, I'm pleased to say that I'm back. I hope the others are having a nice time on their boat. They may even see whales out at sea, hope so. Because there, uh, there were some reports of humpback whales in the area um, a couple of days ago. They may still be hanging around. And um, I'll be seeing them later. I'm going to miss those guys. I'm going to miss them. They're good people. Janet, Paul, Jackie, Ben and Gail Fiddler, the other Ben, and his, Gail, his wife. And uh, Jackie, Richard. Yeah, good guys. It's like, uh, it's, I find it difficult, I'll find it difficult to relate to other people, actually, for a while when I get back. You know, I get the... It's like post-pro blues. You go to, from there. From the clear energy of a place like the Isle of Man, an environment like this, not just a geographical and physical environment, but a mental environment where I can talk about what I want to talk about with people, I suddenly go back to normality. It's, it's, it's a culture shock and it's a jolt, and it's, as you see, I, get, I, get, I do get a bit depressed. I mean, the post pro blues thing. I do get a bit of that actually. It's just, it only lasts about a day, but wears off very quickly. But it's a very real phenomenon. 
There we are. Okay, I'm back in Erie Cushing. I've had me a cup of tea, so and I've had some water as well and orange juice, so I feel a bit better. I'm currently just preparing a little kind of like highlights reel, just for my friends here of my little trip up to Dawlish Cashin, and I showed them a bit of the church as well, just to um, so they may be interested to watch that later when we get back. So um, that's what I'm going to do. It's a bit, to be honest, it's a bit embarrassing. I mean, you know, it's not. I mean, I'm. I'm I was determined to go through with it, and I did. I succeeded, but bloody, you know, I'm, I'm sort of like panting and puffing like Dr. Jonathan Reed, you know, acting like, oh my God, he's thinking I'm about to have a heart attack or something. It's a good job I didn't, actually, because if, re if you really did fall ill on that track, you know, you know, you'd have to just shout for help and hope someone could, could hear you. It's, you know, it's, it's um, probably it was, it's not, I wouldn't say it's reckless, but it's, I understand there was some risk with what I did today. Um, I mean, I accept that risk. I'm a grown man. I take full responsibility for my actions. But you know, it's not something to be taken lightly. I think uh, um, a journey like that. It's not a ram. It's not a pleasant ramble in the woods. Anyway, I just encoded the video now. This is the new version of Win of Movie Maker, which is useless. And when I get home, I just hope to God my desktop's all right and it works, and I can just edit my edit this video as normal. Oh, I hope that so much. Anyway, see you later, guys. I'll hold this in the other hand. Ladies and gents, I've got two cameras now. I've got this one. And um, Richard is going to examine shit. So, uh, you may remember, this was... Can't we found this at Dawlish Cashin. And, uh, now, this looks very fibrous. So, it looks like it consists mainly of grass. So, if that's the case, it has nothing to do with mongooses. Oh, no, strictly carnivorous. Oh. Anyone want to watch Richard just dissecting the shit? Richard is dissecting the shit, if anyone wants to watch. <coughs> this is entertaining, isn't it? So it's mostly grass. Yes. We think it's something that eats veg now. Well, it's, gr it's got grass That is it. completely vegetable matter. Yeah, yeah. So it's not sheep. Oh, no. It is not sheep. I think it's a rat. It's it? not rabbit. I think it's rat. It doesn't look like rats. I've kept rats. Yeah, but yeah, but the rats are eating different things. You might get different poo, wouldn't you? The, the, sh the shape of it. So. The shape of it is wrong. It's yeah. not. It's not rabbit. A lamb. I don't think it's a lamb. The only thing I can think of is a hare. Oh, it could mm. be, couldn't it? Yeah. Now the shape was very similar to a carnivore's shape. Carnivores yeah. generally have. Um, elongated yeah, to carnivores and omnivores, yeah. whereas herbivores have more rounded. Yeah. If you think of the droppings yeah. of a rhinoceros or an elephant, they're very rounded, yeah. Yeah. As, as are rabbits and sheep. Yeah. Whereas the, the, the from a, uh, something like a tiger or a bear, it's it's longer and thinner. Yeah. Which was this sort of a shape, but it is entirely vegetable matter in there. Right. Yeah. So it's nothing to do with the mongoose, and definitely nothing to do with Jeff. Right. I don't think Jeff probably does poos. He's probably no. Certainly not in this world. So, uh, right. Well, uh, that's it. Thank you very much, Richard. Is it? Shall I cut that? Yeah. Okay. okay. So I'll just hand that over to you. Got to cut, stop my own camera. There we go. So there we are, ladies and gents. That's a, a mystery. Well, it's not completely solved. We still don't know what the species is, but we know what it's not. And uh, seeing as we've we've been wondering whether mong mongoose are actually still alive on the island, following their Releasing on the attempt to introdu in, attempted introduction in 1912, uh, we're no longer obviously absence of evidence is not absent, evidence of absence, but there's no evidence so far that these creatures still live on the island. Whether they are, well, they, maybe the supernatural ones or just the normal non-supernatural ones, are the same thing. So there you go. Guys, I'm beginning to wonder if maybe people on this island are going to think we're jinxed because, as you know, as I explained earlier, there was a nasty accident. Uh, at the start of our visit here, where uh, there's a motorcycle crash where two riders were killed, and um, well, to this afternoon it says midday here, but it was actually it was actually a couple of hours later, I think. Um, a light aircraft apparently crashed into the cliffside, not far from where my friends were having their boat tour, and um, indeed they had a bit of an uh, uh, they had a bit of a run-in with the RNLI because um, they they, they, were tr they were keeping people away from the waters around where this happened. No, well, you know, I should just show you the. I'll just show you if I can get this computer to work properly. See, 
On a mouse, you can do this with one hand on a mouse. And I'm moaning again about about how I don't like these pads. You see some photos. There's smoke rising above Brad Hairs. These guys were at Port. Was it Port St Mary or Port Erin? You were at where you got your boat. Uh, Port Erin. Yeah. And um, it's for that. I see. There's a Coast Guard helicopter, police, and divers. Mm. Don't know much more at the moment, except they're saying that there was a. It was a light aircraft, uh, like, like a Cessna, with one occupant, the pilot, and um, it just crashed. It may have been trying to do an emergency landing on Brad Ahead. <clears throat> um, or, but the fact they keep, well, they said the Civil Aviation Administration has put a uh, ban, a, a no fly zone above it for drones. So uh, if Matthew Williams was here, of course, he'd see that as a challenge. <clears throat> but um, obviously, the RNLI were keeping people away on the sea. They're saying, telling people to avoid the area. Um, there could be a legitimate reason for this. They don't want lots of rubbernecks and ghouls going out there to try and get photographs of the injured and or dying, you know, things like that. Or alternatively, it could be aliens, and and this is a cover story. They've done that before, haven't they? Let's face it. So, uh, so which is more likely in your view? Yeah, you you tell me, hey guys. Well, we're back in Peel. Um, um, my probably I think this is probably my favourite of the Manx towns I've been to. It's our, our it's our last evening on the Isle of Man, so we're going to get together and have a meal here at the Marine Hotel. So uh, that's uh, that's a good way I think to to spend our final evening together. So. In this, we're just doing this beach now on this harbour for the last time. Till we come back, of course. Uh, there's uh, yeah. Oh well, you never know. We've got time. There's uh, so the Viking boats. They're rowing the Viking boats. As you can see. Yeah, wicked. We saw them moored, didn't we? And they're rowing them. I think that's going to be an Olympic event at some point, and the Isle of Man will win. It's a nice little spot. Richard, did you enjoy your meal? No, it was garbage. Nice. Now, take a look. Behind, behind me here is the Marine Hotel. Right. If you are ever in um, Peel, in the Isle of Man, do not go there, do not drink there, do not eat there. Their food is garbage, their drink is garbage, their service makes Faulty Towers look like a five-star hotel. Right. Okay. Well, one has a bad one-star on TripAdvisor for the Marine from Richard. Zero stars yeah. on TripAdvisor. Yeah. They actually forgot two of our starters. It was a bit embarrassing. They did apologise and refund, but... It's a bit annoying, that. And, um, my, uh, <clears throat> my suppose is that sirloin steak was dry, tasteless and overcooked, and it tasted like the low-quality beef you get in microwave-ready meals. Oh dear. Right. I suspect it was the low-quality beef you get in microwave-ready mm. uh, meals. Right. Well, that's it. Yeah, so, uh, if you, you should do restaurant reviews, mate, I'll tell you. As a result of our very own Robert Carrier, Richard Freeman, we have actually moved back to the creek and um, we're going to have dessert out here. Well, the others are, I don't have room for one. But, uh, my meal wasn't bad actually, um, but Richard didn't like his as you heard. Got me some cider. Thank oh, this is that's a new cider, cider yeah. from a pop, proper pub. Thank you, Monsieur Richard, homme de liberté. The creek in. Hmm. If, you, if you're going to go to a pub in Peel, go here, don't go to the Marine right, Hotel. Right. Mm. Yep, you got it on good authority there. Nice. We're sky watching. And it was like yeah. they, it was it really something like Star Wars or something. It's Those like, lights are ships. Don't we see these odds. And uh, sorry? Don't start filming I've got hiccups. Oh sorry. I'll edit you out. Here we go. No one knows it. There's a plane up there. But, but we might see the International Space Station in a little while, but we're just waiting for it to appear. It should be visible very soon. But but um, there, the that's some pretty amazing like, stuff. Like, there's lights. Funny enough, there's a the ship over, over there. there. It's the yeah, the lights of the ship. They came on very suddenly. It's a little while ago, I think. I I no, he's, no. he's moving south. No. It was it was over near the yep. lighthouse a little while ago. So I think he's just moving south. He's showing a red light, which means he's um, that's his port side. So he's moving. Yep, he's uh, heading in that direction towards yeah, the south. And, yeah. and definitely heading south. Yeah, but we're now going uh, to cover the. Just gonna cover the viewfinder so people can see more. So, so they're not blinding myself, my, my my night vision. But um the sky is lovely now, the cloud is the, the cloud is cleared. When people say you've got the wisdom oh. useless knowledge. Yeah. This is when not useless knowledge. Okay guys, we're we're actually looking for the International Space Station right now and um 
it might appear very soon. Um, we're just looking at, we think it's actually, but it is above the horizon right now, but it's behind those clouds. It's but, a bit um, murky, isn't it? It's a bit, it's a bit murky, murky over there. However, there's clear sky above the low clouds in the horizon, so we should see it at some point. So um, keep, keep watching. Um, I'll start filming again as soon as it appears. Well, good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday morning. Oh, we never got to see the International Space Station last night. But, well, Paul saw it from, a, from one angle, apparently. So he says... This is the view out of my bedroom window today. It's back in the mist. It's mist time again. Honestly, the weather on at this place, in Kushlin, is so changeable, it's unbelievable. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's, the weather has changed with the usual amounts of abruptness. Look at this, you can, again, you can hardly see 30 feet. Yeah, it's like it's raining a little bit as well. Well, there you go. Of course, we have some tools here for domestic chores, and uh, we are gonna leave this house in a pleasant, a reasonably pleasant state before we go. That's good. Yeah. Now I'm doing the hoovering. Cleaning up this little room. We haven't made much mess. I want to break free. I want to break free. I want to break free. I can't see very well. We're leaving Erie Cushlin now. Um, for the last time. We've cleaned up, we've cleaned the place up. Made it look nice, and so we're off. And uh, uh, that was a uh, that was a wonderful. F what was it eight days? We're now we're now heading back. We've got to go to Douglas, and then uh, from there to the UK. And Richard and we got. Uh, oh, I thought it was Richard there. No, no. And there's Jackie. And here we are at the waterfall in and country pub. I don't think I, well, I've already been here before. So we've already, I've already, of course, filmed this from a distance, but let's film it from close by. Have a look. That's already been put up there. You can see, there's the deep. There you can pause and read that. That's the that's the planning permission. I'm looking there. What's inside? Well, you can still see. It still looks like it. Pub in there. I don't even see, but. There's still chairs and tables and things. The door. And here. Probably the Harry Price. I don't know if these seats were, were there back in those days, but maybe Harry Price sat in that corner there smoking his pipe. And um It's all good curtained off there, another door. I think he's gonna be turned into houses. Anyway, a bit of Jeff history for you. They're the Waterfall count Country Pub. It used to be the Waterfall Hotel. Uh, waterfall Boarding House, I believe. Yeah. And here in this lovely place here in Glen May. It's already overgrowing here. The uh, nature is moving in for now. What's this? It's sad to see, very sad to see. I wonder which room Harry stayed in. Mm -hmm. One of these up here, I guess. We're just walking down to, apparently there's a waterfall down here, which, which the hotel got its name. And in true Manx traditional style, public toilets. You can't go hundred yards on the Isle of Man without finding a public toilet. So we're going across a bridge now, across this really very deep ravine, much deeper than the one we saw before. But you see there's like a waterfall here. Nice. Pretty precarious, actually. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Quite nice. <clears throat> that's where that, that's where the hotel got its name, of course. You can hear it, it's very loud here. 
Right, we've, ascend we've descended deeper and deeper into this ravine now. And you can see there's a cliff here. It's really quite spectacular. Oh, this is lovely, isn't it? Where's Jackie? Oh, nice. And here's the waterfall. <coughs> That's the bridge we came up over. We were right on top of it. That's beautiful, that is. It's far more spectacular than the other waterfall we went to. It's lovely. Oh, no. Look, water's so clear, it's like diamonds. Mm. I'm not sure my video can quite can quite contain the the majesty of this place. The grandeur and the, and the beauty of it all. It's extraordinary as Jackie. This, uh, this is the RNLI's diving boat. Big fast thing there, look at the twin outboards. Also, you couldn't see it, but the front they've got uh, charges for aqualungs. So they're definitely planning on deploying divers. My guess is they're heading for the crash site where that plane came down, or whatever it was. We're actually back in Peel, just having breakfast and uh, or lunch, whatever it is, sort of halfway brunch, as they say in New York. Um, lovely food they do here, actually, at the, the Peel Peel Breakwater kiosk. That's where I just watched the just watched the diving boat um, deploy. So I don't know. Where you put, there doesn't seem to be like a recycling bin here, so I just put them all in there. Um, the weather's bloody awful, but it's okay. We're going. I'm glad it wasn't like that yesterday, so good news there. But we've, we've had a lovely breakfast now, and that's so good way to, to end our stay here on the Island Man. Look at that. Look at those. They're, they're, they're looking for food there, at least. They're hanging around waiting for us to go. What's Ogden's Ravens for? Moving and moving and the other one. Nevermore! Oops. Nevermore. There's ravens. There's two ravens. There's a smaller thing here. There's another one there. Oh god, ravens. Yeah, my friend's raven is like this. That one's got a sort of Alfred Hitchcock gleam in his eye. Yeah, yeah. Look at this here. Beware of the seagulls. Dum 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 Guys, this is the tin world. Um, you can just see it's now. I'll, I'll look at more about this later, but I didn't know that. But uh, I assume that the the capital was. I know that Douglas has de designated the capital, but um, that's what they have to, on Tin World Day. They do a parade down there. I know and they um, have to, they, there's some kind of ceremony, much of it in Manx language, and uh, the Parliament sits for like one day a year or something like that. And I, I don't have all the details to hand, even though I've been looking them up. But uh, that there is Tin World. So yeah, we're heading from Peel now to Douglas. There's a ship out at sea there. Mm, wow, that's not a, that's not a ferry either. I think that's a cruise liner of some description. I'll look her up on Ship Tracker in a little while. Anyway, guys, welcome back to Douglas, Texas. We've got an hour to wait till we can check in for the ferry. So, uh, we're Richard and Richard and Jackie are going to go shopping. I'm going to tag along. Sort of browsing now to pass the time. There's an article about the air crash. Well, look at this. The Daily Star. That's the Daily Star. Yeah, nerds versus aliens. We'll break into official computer. 
Genius Hackers Nerdy Group Anonymous have found to use their computer skills to uncover the truth about aliens and UFOs as in the Thomas Fulst. Well, you remember the last article from the Daily Star about this subject and how awful it was. For, I made a video about it because it's so bad. So, uh, oh my I'm not holding my breath. Jerry, space I'm not expecting you. I've been in the sea. Another quick dip in it. I say a little dip. Yep, I've been in the sea. Just about. I've just been in the sea. Hmm. Yeah, not the nice weather. Whoops. Not the nice weather that comes to the sea, but there you go. Oh my gosh, we are actually at the terminal gate now, so uh, we've just got to wait for them to let us in, which will be in a few minutes, according to their signboard. It appears so far the ferry is on schedule. Okay, well, we're inside the terminal now. We're inside, the, and um, I'll just show as much of it as I can. Hopefully, I'm going to get a better shot of it later. But right now, we're sort of stuck in our cars as they're queuing everyone up, so probably it's not safe for me to get out of the car now uh, because there'll be people driving up immediately on my left. But this is, I'll show you as much of the terminal as I can right now. And there's that weird building over there, the one with the UFO underneath, according to Ross Coulthard. Well, no, but that's what it makes me think of. No sign of the ship. The ship we're going on is called Mananan, and apparently, according to Jackie, who's, who's sailed on her before, it's a much nicer ship than uh, Ben McCree. So we'll see. Anyway, we're actually not going to Haitian. We're going back to Liverpool rather than Haitian. Although, um, oddly enough, the journey is shorter. It's only about two hours, as opposed to three and a half hours for the journey from Haitian to Douglas. If you actually look at the map, you'll see Liverpool is slightly further away than Haitian. So um, I'm not sure how that works. Maybe it's to do with currents and things like that. You know, maybe the, the uh, ship has a current that's going in the right direction. We'll soon find out. Look at this. Just out that way, sir. Okay, sure. Just direction, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, you're just going to go straight ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. just. Uh, I've already handed my passing. I think I'm, I'm clear. Oh, okay, okay cheers. You. Yes, you weren't hearing things. That, by the way, is our. Is, what's that? Is that our ship? It's tiny. It's tiny. Oh. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, you weren't hearing things. And you weren't seeing things that they have a you have to have an access pass to get into the lounge. I'll I'll say more in a minute, I'm just gonna get back in the car. Okay, I've, just, I've just heard from Jackie who's done this journey before, and apparently that is normal practice. Now she this didn't happen to me at Haysham though, which is strange. This definitely did not happen. I was uh, as as you know, as I showed you, you just you just sort of get out of the car and walk in there. Um, apparently, this is done for like safety reasons. So they know where you are because if you're a passenger, you know you could, you could go missing or something. Either way, you know I find it a bit disconcerting. But from what little you saw of the uh, departure lounge, it wasn't very nice. I mean, it's just a, a row of shops with some seats, rather like a very cheap airport departure lounge, really. Um, but you've seen a little bit of it. I'm not going to go exploring in there, not least because we. We could be boarding any minute now, and um, I asked the lady, I says, I, I asked one of them, I said, uh, do you know how long we have to wait here? Do I? And she says, oh, you've got time to go to the toilet. And I says, do you know how long it'll be to we're boarding? Oh, you need to ask someone dressed in orange for that. <laughs> so the yellow, ja it's like David Icke talks about the yellow jacket people and the grey suits. But apparently this time it's only orange jacket people are initiated to the level of knowing when the, when the cars are going to be loaded onto the ferry. Um, but... Um, um, anyway, the ferry, I don't know if you guys have seen, have you seen the Mananan before? Yeah. Yeah. It's a very, it looks very small. I just saw a little, I just saw her. She said, oh, that's, the, that's your ship, that's the ship you're boarding. I thought, what? And I looked, and, hmm. 
It looks like a really sort of small little squat thing. Oh, very small indeed. Oh right. Oh strange. Anyway, we'll, I'll, the mystery will be solved soon, I'm sure. Just had an announcement that they're going to load us now onto the into the vehicle hold of the ship. You know, the ship taking us to Liverpool. And uh, someone in a very broad scouse, scouse accent just said that. Incidentally, something I've noticed. Uh, I've not managed to identify what you might call Manx English. In other words, e even as, as we've explained, um, the Isle of Man does have its own language. I haven't heard anything you might call an Isle of Man accent. I've heard people with Liverpudlian accents, North Country accents, a couple of Ulster accents, an Irish. Um, but no, there's no none which you could call local. I'd say um, there may be one, but I haven't. I managed to identify one. So uh, maybe, maybe if you can find some samples of it, I can say it. But I can't. I haven't seen any of that. Anyway, we we now uh, everyone's now being ushered back to their cars um, down the sheep pen, handing their tickets in. Otherwise, they get locked in the lounge uh, for boarding on the ship. Look, I think we're going in a minute. Just to you see there, just up through there, there's like a bridge. That bridge up there, I think, is for foot passengers. Can you see it there? Um, there's a big walkway, that's a, like a jetway at an airport. That's, that's where the foot passengers go, and you can actually see it on... Um, you can actually... You might have seen it when we arrived in Douglas, when the weather was not nice, I must say. Um, but right now, we're just... We're going to be boarding the, the ship soon. So, um, I'm interested to film that. This ship, I mean, it, didn't, it doesn't look like a ship, it looks like a little boxy thing. But we'll see anyway. Here we go. Let's have a look. We're now boarding the ship. It's just a one stage thing here, not two stages like at Hailsham. At Hailsham, we, at Hailsham we have like, they put us into a holding area. This, that is on a ship. Is this not see much, unfortunately, but. You don't, you don't get as much good a view as you do in Haitian. I've got an awful feeling this is a sea cat. Oh god, I'm going to have a rant later. This is a sea cat. I guess I'm going to have a rant. Here's, here's the orange jacket, guys. You're initiated into the force. No. That way, right. Very, it looks like it's a very different sort of vehicle hold to, to Ben McCree. Still driving. All oh, right. This is. We appear to be stuck on some kind of ground. Right. Mm. 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 It's like a multi-story car park here. We have all these plants. Going up, 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 here with the help. So, we've got open, there's an open vehicle hole here. God, this is, this is strange. I've never seen a, a vehicle hole like this before. I know you're supposed to say car deck, but I say vehicle hole. And there's another orange jacket. Um, first 33rd degree person here. Cleats down there, which they use to chain down the car wheels. Oh, there's a sailor there just directing us. Hi, Anne, sorry, madam. 
right hand side. Yeah. Right hand side, yeah. Right hand side. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, looks like we've manoeuvred onto this ramp. It's a slight upward slope now. He's doing his little Masonic handshake, I see. Okay. Where we parked the last time, do you remember it? You've been on Second the ship. Second one back on yeah. the right, this bit. This oh, was identical. Oh, right. Wow. Identical spot where I parked the last time. And you could actually, we're out open. Exactly we're on the open yeah. deck, you can see the landscape there the above spot. Douglas. Yeah. Right, so we're, we're now, the car's on, the car is now on board. And here we go, we're going on board the ship. We're going to see our passengers this way. Nice. This is a completely different kind of passenger lounges, I know they do. Um, this is a completely different kind of ship to what I'm used to. I've never been on a sea cat before. There is Manan and Douglas, it's a Manx ship. And there is their harbour, as you can see. Manx. There's that ship I saw earlier. Nice. And here's a... Blimey. We can, we can look at the, uh, look at the Oh right, we can see over the front, yeah. And this is it, this is the deck plan. It's actually quite simple. Alright. Where are we? I think we're... Anyway. We can actually sit at the front and... Not that we're going to see it an awful lot, but... Get more leg room. And Jack can keep an eye on her car. The home of the thylacine there, Tasmania. That's one of the. That's one of the kind of like uh, places we've got here. Anyway, that's one of the decorations we have on this Manx ship. Funny enough, even though it um, says it's uh, the lifeboat well, says Douglas. Look, look what is ruling the waves right now. Yes, the good old UJ. Hmm. All right, so you can't really, we have these seats here, which are like rows of seats, like on an aeroplane. We can sort of relax, and we've got the front row, so we've got more leg room. <laughs> but it's a bit aeroplane-like. Do you think this is a bit aeroplane-like, Jackie? Yeah, very similar. It's not, it's, it feels like we've been on, on a big plane. Anyway, guys, um, let's, I'm going to explore and have a little explore of our rather meagre passenger facilities here. Shouldn't take long actually, you should be able to do it in one shot. Right, so here is a. I assume this is where we are. Was it here? The executive club lounge? I don't know. Uh, we just come in there, I think. Information, that's the information desk there, so that's where we are. There's a red, red dot to say where we are. And we go here, little people's play area and the eatery. Crew only. Do they still call them that? Shouldn't they call them staff or facilitators or something like that? Um, there we have like you know, Pullman seats here, so it's a little bit more. You see, it's just slightly more, a bit more decent than just rows of seats. Oh, that's reserved. Oh, we've got televisions everywhere. I'll go along that way. Oh, look, little people's play, that's nice. Come along here, and uh, another TV, just in case you missed the first one. Finally. So I'm a, a motorbike, the first Manx thing I've seen. <coughs> this is, oh, we've gone along this, this bit here. Cinema Lounge. Today's films, Frozen 2, The Lost City, sounds bloody awful. Anyway, this is where you watch cinema, this is where you watch movies. Yeah. Rather, no popcorn. There's more of these seats here. Ah, oh, games, things like that. And we keep walking along here. And, by oh goodness, we've reached the end of the ship already. We call this a ship. Oh god, we're at the end already. And you see they're still loading, they're still loading vehicles with half an hour to go. And this is a cafeteria. We'll open it as you know. And the bar is called. Yes. Go along here. 
more fruit machines, things for recycling. You need daily dose of brainwashing. And so we're here, so we're gonna go along the port side of the ship now. There's your bogs anyway. Is that a cinema too? What's that? There's another cinema on this side. I think that's what it is. Maybe it's just the same one. Let's go back to the map and have a look. Um, that's it. Oh yes, that's cinema two, that's cinema one. Right, two cinemas. I don't have to show you the same films. That's right, cinema one. And then there's the eatery again. This is the eatery one, I suppose. Or eatery port side. And there is a shop. We have a shop. Thank goodness for that. We can spend our hard-earned money. You can't get away from you can't get away from a gossip you. Oh, look, this is a another map of the ship here. I think this is just this the engine includes the engine room and things like that. It's a bit more interesting. Yeah, slightly more interesting. This we get more food here. On board shopping. There you go. <laughs> Come forward from here. And here we are. I'm, uh, I'm, right, I'm right back where I started already. Is that the extent of our world here? I can see this. I can get upstairs. <clears throat> the executive club lounge. Well, I think this is the posh part. I think it is. There's a lift. What's in here? All right, cheers. I want some more. Yeah, look. There's more. Oh, Nyaville again! We have Nyaville Reserve Lounge Observation Deck. I've got a feeling this is the posh bit, and I won't be, I won't be hanging around here for very long. I just want to have a quick look. Oh yes. Oh yes, this is the this is the open deck where you can see things. No access except this little square bit here. Oh well, there you go. Better get out of here before I get arrested for piracy on the high seas. Hugh Edwards. Hugh Edwards has been suspended by the way. Yeah. Like, uh, oh he was, what was he, shagging a 23 year old? Yeah, 23 year old, not a 13 year old. The ones who, the ones who did it were 13 year olds. No one's suspending them or even investigating them. Yes, nice, nice trick BBC. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm I'm not going Harry Hill, I'm leaving my glasses behind, so I'm sort of like more, um, think of a famous, completely bald person who doesn't wear glasses. I'm, I'm, I'm going in that mode. And I am um, going to watch the departure in a minute, but I'm just sitting here in my boring rows of seats here. Although, my opinion of this ship is not shared by my shipmates. Richard and Jackie actually like this particular vessel, so that's cool. It's, it, you know, my own opinions are not shared by everybody, but there you go. I'd much rather be riding on that over there. And that is the that's the one we saw earlier. Yeah. Alright. As you can see, there are rails here for us to hold on to if we need to. And okay, I'm gonna go and watch the departure now. So go into the open deck. <laughs> um, this is over here. Just over there. Um, there's more TV. And again, the, the chairs are chained very firmly to the deck. and go over here. Right. This is the, the after deck here. Um, 
which has lots of beer barrels, still loading, still loading cars. As you can see, there are other vehicles, a few more camper vans to come, and uh, beer. So we've got enough beer to last us for the journey. I can hear some rumbling now with the engines. Designated smoking area, right. That's it. Please dispose of extinguish. Um, do not throw garbage overboard. Not for a special area. Designated weight national terminal. Garbage. We're not Americans. Why are they saying garbage? I'll just I'll, I'll throw something over and say, I don't know what garbage is, mate. Do I look like a yank to you? Please drive slowly. This is the, the Douglas Terminus where we arrived. We actually arrived over there, I think, on the one over there. But, um, this is a very, very small open deck space here. I don't know if it's the only one. I'm going to see if I can find another. Facilitators, star facilitators only, no access. Thank you for not smoking. Oh, this is for boarding the foot passengers, I see. All right, boarding foot passengers board this way, not on the posh bridge. Right, there's another bit of open deck. I've got a feeling it's an automatic dog, but I feel like it's going to be locked when the vessel departs. So, uh, so probably I won't be able to come out here again. And as you can see, they're boarding the last of the vehicles now, then they will raise the, they'll raise the ramp over the vehicle hold. Now, I don't know what those features are there. I've got to think that might be the, the propulsion. I haven't looked up yet, but I'll, I'll look up a little bit more about this particular ship and how she operates, because it's not like a conventional ship. I think we've got the last of the... That's the last of the cars coming on board now. we have almost finished loading now. They're just loading these... These kind of little... electric carts of everything there, luggage carriers. And, um... They're pulling these these mats inside in, in board as well. Um, I've seen none of them like the the lorry the, the lorry tugs that they have in Haitian. Not seen any of those. Maybe I don't think they send cargo on the on this line on this route. I don't think they're going to raise this rail in a minute. Those mats, I suppose, just make it easier for vehicles to to mount the to mount the ramp. Okay, the, the vehicle hold ramp is sort of slowly coming up. Um, there's, there seems to be a lot of exhaust coming from the after the ship, which is unusual. It's like it's, there's no funnel, and the, and the exhaust is coming is sort of leaking out of the out of the rear end. That's what it feels like. I don't know if that's deliberate. We'll find out later. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a bit more about this ship and her design and how she works later on. There's a lift here on. So there's no unauthorized access. There's a lift. That's actually a lift. But uh, getting ready to raise the vehicle hold ramp right now. It's very slowly, it seems to be happening very slowly, it's all coming up. And there's the, that's the lifting winch there. Oh, there I see. Seems to, the wind seems to be uh, jamming and opening the stuff. So. Probably it's got stuck somehow. side at a time. We can't put it together. So very slowly it's kind of like, you see what I mean, the winches are like not working together. Maybe that's normal, maybe that's how it works. There was a guy here a moment ago ready to cast off the line. Just they still do that. But he's gone back indoors now, probably because it's wet. Now they're working together, very jerkily. The vehicle hold ramp is rising. 
Let's trim those things down there. I think those are part of the ship's propulsion system. I'll come back to those later. <clears throat> mm, this is just already turning into a far, this is already turning into a far less interesting departure than the Ben McCree from Haitian, isn't it? It's not as good, of course, but then there's Douglas over there. Oh, stuck. That sounds bad. We've just been ordered to come below decks. Well, if you pull that, I don't think you're still allowed to use that word. You should return to the seat immediately. The crew have been trained for such a situation, well, captain, and they will inform you of what to do. And for your own safety, you listen closely to those instructions. Here's the guy you are the, the eye on you. Oh, it's alright. Actually, he's going to cast off the lines in a minute. Yeah. I was going to show you that the, uh, there seems to be like a jet, actually a jet propulsors rather than propellers this ship. You can actually see them. There we go, passing off now. Please read carefully. Just cast off. Yeah. Oh, watch the departure. Still raising there. No, that's it. Is that as high as it goes? Quite safe to me. I'm here to quite watertight. That's, that's what I feel as well. Yeah. That's why it's the same brother. Oh, we're moving now anyway. <laughs> Can we uh, just, we're moving yeah. just. Yeah, I can't believe that, that, that the rear deck isn't sealed. No, 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 no it's quite wet. Well, I suppose the forward deck isn't sealed either, so. Well, it'd be nice. I like the open deck, but. Um, it's, but, but the down below it should be. You think it would like be a seal? Yeah, we're watertight seal. Yes. But it's not, it's not. Tighten yeah. yeah. the belt by pulling on the free ends as shown. A light we were watching the boat go out the other night. The light will activate automatically <laughs> when you come to water. In addition, and a every photo that I find on online, the yeah. the and then I'm always sailing like that. I wonder what came over Ben McCree from Haitian. It was, was very different to this ship. Yeah. The sea cats. Yes. Yeah, this is, um, this is much faster. Once you get the banana, they're the mountain going very nice. Yeah. Keep calm! Don't swim like the captain like a keyboard! So have you been over on the island for uh, the races? No, I just went over there for a week with some friends. Just on holiday. Yeah, well, it's not exactly a sunny week. Yeah, most days were nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday was lovely. Yeah, we'll see Sunday was nice. In the afternoon. Yeah, yesterday was lovely. Yeah, we'll see. We I went on a nice walk. Tennis. Oh, I went on the uh, went for a long walk yesterday. It was very nice by the coast near near. Um, Port Erin. It was very nice. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Lovely. Up, up, up the hill. Mm -hmm. No, I just went to. I went to Airy Lake, Airy Lars, another mountain, and another hill to climb. It's very nice. Please make themselves known to the crew member prior to the journey. 
Thank you for your attention and cooperation. We yeah. wish you a pleasant coffee. Right, sorry, mm. 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 Right. <coughs> Alright, yeah, um, here we go, we've now departed. That apparently is as high as the ramp goes. Some of the lady who's a regular passenger told me. This is as high as it goes. <laughs> that is the closed ramp to the vehicle hold. As you can see, there's a jet propulsion, there's like a pump jet propulsion there. A long way from the water. Yeah, I know that it is a bit high, but still, there's no watertight seal. I mean, not like, so they're treating it like it's open deck here, but the. Yeah. yeah, but this is, you can see there's not, rather than a rudder, they, the pump jet propulsors actually rotate like that, they move, you see. So, I know it's annoying, that's a very annoying um, safety now, so there's the pump jet propulsors there, you can see. Yeah. That's how it works, there's no propellers, or the propellers are internal, there's an internal ducted pump jet. Um, we would like to welcome you on board Banana. If you have any problems or require assistance during the voyage, please do not hesitate to contact the Information Bureau. The water looks lovely. Sorry? Yeah, as they turn, that's right. It's a lovely, lovely, the water looks lovely actually, doesn't it? It's <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. Of, it feels like there's, there's an exhaust funnel is, is actually here at the aft end. It's not above. I can, I can smell exhaust. Yeah. <coughs> so there's the exhaust. There's the exhaust funnel down here. Yeah. We go. Look. Speeding up. You may have noticed this ship is very fast compared to Ben McQueen. Look at it. There we go. Look at that. This actually gets to Liverpool in two and a half hours. Let's see. Right. right, yeah, look at the exhaust. Yeah. That's it. That's exhaust. That's where's, where's the funnel? There it is. No funnel. My carbon footprint conscience is not happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, don't, I think it's probably about as, uh, as clean and uh, even as environmentally friendly as you can travel, I think. It's the only way on the island reliably. Exactly, as you fly. It's probably, it's probably there's so much, so much stuff on the island yeah. now, the, the, the planes coming. Yeah. Because uh, there are other bad companies Oh, right, there you are. So, there you go, see, so this this is like probably the best way, or the easiest way of getting on and off by the Isle of Man. So, that's the way, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not, no. It's raining, but the wind doesn't seem too bad. That's the kind of ship I want to go on, one like that. Yeah. That's a beauty. She's a beauty. What's her name? That's quite a luxury. Yeah. That's a cruise. That's, is that a cruise ferry or a cruise liner? Beautiful, anyway. Cruise liner. Cruise liner. Yeah, beautiful. The seven seas. Seven. Oh, it's a seven seas ship. So beautiful. Yeah, it's a lovely one. See, we are. You may have noticed how quickly we cleared the harbour. <laughs> we passed the submarine rock already. We're in open sea already. And uh, in this in this weather, uh, the Isle of Man will pretty soon be out of sight. We won't be able to see we won't be able to see as much as we did when we came over here. So, and the waves, you can see the swell actually. But look at you can see that it's literally here's a pump jet propulsor it's blowing water out of the back. That's how it works. Goodbye, Isle of Man. See you again. Manxman is coming in. Now that is a ship. Um, as far as I know, she's still on sea trials, but uh, due to enter service any time now. Now that is a proper ship. Okay. That's why I hesitated. I've got mine on. 
We're at the forward lounge window now. We just watched Mangsman go past. Um, there's um, Jackie Bridge, who's done this trip before, switched off her car alarm. But we were just listening to like what a symphony you described. Yeah, yeah symphony, of car <laughs> symphony of car alarms. Five or six. Games yeah. games they all start. There's one. You see, there's one going on there. <laughs> The moment the ship starts rocking, that's what happens, yeah. And it, it was some swell, actually, you could feel it. Um, I was walking. Past, yeah. But anyway, um, we watched the departure, but of course there was that rather annoying... Sorry, please do not sit on my right. There was a rather annoying... Um, there's a rather annoying safety announcement you just heard, which was... Um, which... Um, in which they ordered us below decks so we can listen to this stupid novelty down. Safety announcement, stupid novelty like childish safety announcement, you know, with, with pirate voices and things like that. Oh, what a. Yeah, I'm. Uh... And then, the moment it was finished, I didn't wait to be told, I just went, I just opened it and went, I went back onto the observation deck again. Um, and it's pretty, pretty lousy stuff anyway. But uh, anyway, uh, this, it only takes two and a half hours to get to Liverpool from here. So, yeah. Uh, <coughs> I'll have, I'll have my rant, I'll have a rant, okay, but I'll have the rant later, it's just building up in me, alright, so it'll be a much better rant if I save it for just a, a little while longer. So I just brought myself this little soft drink in the canteen area, and uh, the cha she gave me change, which included a Manx £5 note, um, which I can't spend anywhere except on this ship. So she said, I mean, you've, got, have you got a UK fiver? And she says, no, no, I haven't got one on me. You go to the purser's office and they'll change it for you. I've been to the purser's office. They haven't got one either. I'm sure that's deliberate. So now what I can do is, I can spend it on the ship or change it when I get back to the UK. Is that deliberate? Is that a trick to make me spend more money? It wouldn't surprise me. Anyway, this is the room with a view, which has no view. So there you go. Okay, I finally got rid of it. I bought Jackie a coffee. Mofos, absolute mofos. Is that a door? No access for the vessel is at sea. There you are. Literally, you're confined to this little a few square feet out here. of the open deck here on the Nanan and uh, it's just called a smoking area it's, it is like just your average little smoking area little cubby hole outdoors where people can go and have a fag just really uh, bloody awful out here but this, uh, these uh, pump jet propulsors kick off a lot of salt a lot of salty sea spray and it's uh, it's got a very pleasant smell I must say that's a positive I can say about this ship I'm going stir crazy. I'm just wandering around this little, this little cloister of boredom and tension that I showed you earlier. I can't sit in my seat for long. I want to get up and walk around. Go on to the, go on to the after deck and just sit there. And it's like, oh, little square space of noise and smelly, smelly exhaust and things like that. And um, I'm tempted to. I don't even intend to go in and watch the, watch the movie. Maybe it may not be that bad. But, yeah, this is a, this is lousy. It's actually quite rough. There's quite a bit of tip. There's a lot of uh, there's tipping. You know, like what's the word? There's a lot of rolling. The ship's rolling quite a bit. You can't get a Wi-Fi signal. Um, just all. This. I'm actually quite glad this is a short voyage. Two and, two and three quarter hours it takes to get to Liverpool. Um, too short, obviously, and I'll say more about that later, but it's just... I wish I'd have brought my FTs to read if I'd known this was going to happen. There you go, anyway, you can pause and read this. This is where I've been going, been walking around there like that, walking around through these aeroplane... These aeroplane seats, I mean, I might as well be on some kind of 747. That's the, that's the posh bit there. And then you say, oh, you see, oh, this is a bit more interesting. You have like a... <coughs> 
you have like the, the ship's design there. The wheelhouse is this. This is the that's the captain's. Oh, sorry. Did I say captain? I meant some um, operations facilitation manager. And um, that's one of his seats and one of his consoles there. So it's, it's, um, it's got a list of different things here. Yeah. Stored in the wheelhouse. They call it that, or do they call it the? I think they probably call it the uh, the, the management operational ergonomic suite. Um, so it says here, like, um, that's the car deck there. There's lifts that take you up and down. There's one lift comes out on the other, actually on the open open deck. And these, these are the, the twin hulls. It's the catamarans. There's twin hulls there, <coughs> which lift the main superstructure above the above the water surface. And um, uh, yeah, there's, there's lifeboats and things here. That's the car deck there. Uh, it's not the end, uh, maybe the engine room there. Down here, this is the engine room. That's sort of slightly more interesting. Yes, the engine room, caterpillar, and uh, maybe the jet room. It's a pump jet propulsor. Um, the, the word the name caterpillar may be borrowed from Tom Clancy's Hunt for Red October, actually. Yeah. The Iron Man Steam Packet Company, yeah. Anyway, I overheard someone talking about the. Uh, I saw. Um, I heard someone at the, at the start of the purses office. Sorry, sorry, the um, customer service office um, talking to one of the um, one of the passengers. The noise now. There's noise everywhere here. Everywhere I go, there's noise. And um, yeah, it's just we go along here. And it's, um, I'm looking for a quiet place. I can't find it. No access there again. There's your instructions. Um, well, here's, now here's just a map of the various places in the Isle of Man. The posters, ads. Oh, oh, we go along here. There's the simple. There's the simple. Uh, that's the simple setting. You get that map. What's this? Oh, it's, and there's every 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 TV show and news channels. And here we have that bloody migrant ho floating migrant barge. A pool. That's in your notice. Oh dear. Know your limits. You can gamble your savings away like, by uh, you play these machines or buying things from the buying things from the cafeteria. And um, yeah, you go along here. Still one This is the only kind of interior inside kind of bit from this entire ship. <laughs> yeah, well, ubiquitous CCTV. Restricted area, authorised person. Authorised person, yeah. Um, there are still some signs that use very politically incorrect language on here. Like uh, they say things like crew only, but the word, and even the cap, the sorry, the operation, the facilitations direction manager said the off the captain, officers, and crew of the Manana. And they should be saying. Um, operations facilitation manager, um, senior accountant officials, and um, customer service staff. They shouldn't be using these old-fashioned nautical terms on a on a modern, politically correct, um, polished corporate vessel or per thing or movable bridge, whatever the bloody hell it is. Right um, here. Let me just see Stop and say, I shouldn't be using these words. These are, these are, I'm, they're offensive. <coughs> don't watch the lost city or frozen two. I don't, I don't like the sound of either of those phones. But anyway, um, I'm going to go back and spend another five minutes sitting in my seat before I get itchy feet again. So here we go. Okay, one, one slight improvement, one, one positive thing to say about Manana. Um, you've got a view over, the passengers have a view over the bows. And it's similar to the one actually on Ben McCree. It's, in, you know, it's, it's got other things in front of it, as you can see ahead. Um, on, on the old ferries, you could never, they never gave you a view ahead. Hardly any of them did. Um, which means, um, I'm just going to maybe just look out and see if I can see land when it appears. Well, I mean, the visibility has improved slightly actually, so you may, I may get be able to see the coast of England appear. 
pretty soon before it does. I mean, you've got to check on the map to see which way we're going between Douglas on the Isle of Man and Liverpool, England. So you will see for yourself where we're actually going. What you can do if you're ever in a place where there's nothing else to do, you can always sleep. And that's what I did when I was locked in a police cell, and um, that's what I'm going to try and do now. I'm trying to sleep while I have this interrogator's lamp shining in my eye. They're all over the ship, every <coughs> single few square feet. Every few seconds, another one over there, see, look. And another one is up there. There's four in this cabin, this compartment alone. The interrogator lamp shining in our eyes. And they're all showing news channels. All they're showing the news channels are Sky News. Oh, wow. It's like... Oh, it's like the men who stared at goats. Alright, so I'll, uh, I'll save my ma main rant for the end, but uh, basically this is, a, this is an awful sea voyage. I and mean, it's really nothing you can do. Unless you like sitting in an aeroplane like seats and pretending you are on an aeroplane. Gambling your money. Buying cheap duty-free tap. Smoking, watching uh, second-rate children's movies, um, eating sort of like cheaper, um, eating rather plain food, and just sort of, as I said earlier, watching the interrogators lamp. Had two and three quarter hours of continuous Sky News. I mean, goodness me, I'd be talking, wouldn't I? I'd be talking non-stop after, after that, so, um, but, uh, as I said, I'll, I'll save my main run for later. Look, we've got land. Land out there's, there's wind farms, of course. But there is uh, land, that's actually North Wales. We're, um, we're in the Abigelly Roads, that's the seas leading into Liverpool. And it's cleared up a little bit now. And up ahead, you can see some more. Oh, look, some there's more land ahead. So I saw that other ship and I, I felt like Richard, you know, Richard Chamberlain's character, you know, in the Count of Monte Cristo in the film where he, he finds a beetle crawling on the window ledge of his prison cell. <laughs> That's an exaggeration, of course, but you know what I mean. Yeah, we are approaching land. Lots of wind farms, of course, but land indeed. Of course, you can't see anything ahead at all. It's got these big metal plates like blinkers to stop you seeing anything but the direct aft when you're on the smoking. Sorry, the, I was going to say the open deck, the smoking area. It's just a heat, mate. Yeah. I'm not sure that one is. You're going so fast, you can't really, you can't really tell. There's the coast there. You don't really see US, I'm dead now. Conway in that area. Yeah, we're actually in a good Cruising 31 knots, which is very fast indeed for a passenger ship. Hooray! Very fast. It's what you'd expect. It's a sea cap, hydrofoils, and some submarines can go that fast. Some warships as well, but not us. <coughs> as you can see ahead, we're actually entering the River Mersey there, between Liverpool and the Wirral. It's not focusing because I'm it's on the window. Okay, we're nearly there now. There's a harbour over there. 
There's Liverpool. So much of the city of Liverpool. Uh, there's the cathedral, I think. Where's the other? There's two cathedrals in Liverpool. The other one is like a big. It's like a really, really creepy barren door type thing. Oh, there it is. That's the Anglican Cathedral. And then, oh, there's that. There's the level set the AM where we used to we used to broadcast Planet X Radio from that. Do you remember those days? It's one of the towers of the Liver Building. And there's a fabulous one that is Liverpool Island. There's a ship. And this side is the Wirral. It's new. I don't know, it's New Brighton, I don't know this. And there's the Ferry. Cross the Big one and small. Oh, that's it. That's Nemo. That's Nemo. There's parts of the Wirral there. Nearly there now, they've just been announced but they will be arriving shortly, but we've got to stay in the passenger lounges until one of the crew, sorry, facilitation, facilitation facilitators tells us to uh, just proceed to the car so we can leave this movable bridge. That, and there we have, oh that is a proper ship, that is a proper ship, that is, this is ambition, I like it, I like the name. <coughs> What a lovely shot that is. Let's see if we can complete it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's a lovely ship, that is. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That gives you a sense of scale. There's somebody up there, some people up there. I don't know if this ship is. Uh, Cruise right now. This is a home port. It's a beautiful thing, anyway. Well, that's what the ship should be. Not like this thing. Okay, so it was a different ram to what I thought it was, different berth, but uh, as you can see now the propulsors have turned around because they're removing us. And uh, we almost collided with the ferry across the Nessie, we didn't quite luckily. That's for the foot passengers. There's a gangway for the foot passengers. The water's not as clear here as it was in Douglas, isn't it? It's like muddy. Or... Liverpool. There's 
the orange and the yellows again the two casts of the uh, docker freemasonry waiting waiting around I don't know what they're there for probably to strip search us been a call for car passengers so I should go but honestly all I I was a few minutes late last time I was caught caught at the back of the queue there's nothing you can do we should be cast off the line soon there we are no sooner than I say it Yeah. There we are. All right. Welcome to Liverpool. She's very strong, that road. Here we are, contacts. Ambition is departing, you yeah. see? Can we just be quiet for a second? Okay. Okay. Ambition is departing. Let's see that. We're about to leave this ship. So we're, we're now leaving these Mananan, departing from the vehicle hold. <clears throat> and this this two and a half hour trip on this movable bridge is now is now over. As I but I'd much prefer it if this was a conventional cruise ferry and I'd like it if it was a five hour voyage. I'll say more later when I have my main rant. <clears throat> so,
There's, there she is, there's Ambition. Oh, that's what a ship should be. Oh, hey, look, there she goes. Right. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? Turn right, mm. then turn left. And we are a couple of minutes now. Go off the ship. We're heading back in England. And did those feet in ancient times walk upon England's mountains green? And was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen? And is a countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem builded here among those dark satanic mills? Turn left on the Prince's Parade. Bring me my bow of burning gold. Bring me my arrows of desire. Bring me my spear, O oh clouds unfold. Bring me my chariot of fire. I shall not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. I once wrote a collection of horror stories. Yay! Hey, good on you, mate. In just admiring the art. There's, there's a lot of good architecture here in Liverpool. This, this stone wall is very, very well made. It's very old. <laughs> uh, it's uh, there's dates on it, 1848. It's still standing now, and a lot of much newer buildings have fallen apart. Um, we're actually going to a friend's house. We're a friend of ours has invited us around to dinner. It's it's Andy and Nathan, who you may remember from Weird Weekend North. That's really, really good. It's really nice. Uh, because we're actually staying overnight in this area. We're not going straight back. It's a bit too far. So um, it'd be great to see those guys again. Well, hello there. It's actually about... Um, it's about 11 o'clock at night or half past 11. I don't know. But anyway, um, we are in Chester. We've uh, had a lovely time in Liverpool because we went to our friends... We went to our friends who live in Liverpool, Andy and Nathan, and we had a, a lovely meal. They cooked us dinner, and it was really, really nice. We had a great time. Um, it is, um, they lived in, I mean, we were a bit worried because, we were a bit worried because it was like, uh, you know, li you know, re Liverpool has a reputation. However, it, they live in the posh part of Liverpool. Now, they're not posh, these people, but they happen to live in the posh part of Liverpool. Now, um, I know that sounds a bit weird. I mean, I, the, the idea that, there is such a thing as a posh part of Liverpool is kind of like really strange and really alien. I mean, um, unthinkable. I mean, a po the idea of a posh part of Liverpool going there is as weird as saying I'm going to one of the moons of Saturn or something. But um, it does exist and we are living testimony that it does. So, uh, so that's... Um, so that's what we did. We had a lovely time. Now we're in this hotel here in Chester, and um, we're going to spend the night here. Then we're going to head home, finally home. Uh, good morning, everyone from Chester. Uh, this is uh, the view out of the of the uh, window of our hotel. Never been to Chester before, but uh, my first time. And it's sort of like a charming, but sort of like. Modest view of the back of some people's houses. I slept very well last night, it was very good. Um, no strange things going bump. Um, if you want to know what, I actually explained what that means, but something weird happened on that last night in Erie Cushland. We'll talk more about that later. Which I'm here in Chester. <coughs> like I said, place I've never been before. I'm in here at, uh, that's actually the next door's hotel. This one, that's not the Kilimori Lodge. This one's the Bowman Hotel. But you can see here there's vacancy signs been turned around. And this is the dining room or lounge here in uh, in this particular 
hotel, which is nice. Um, I just thought I wanted to say a few words about what I was thinking very, very much about yesterday. That is sea travel. Now, this is the rant I've been promising you for a long time. It's now arrived. Now is the time to deliver it. Um, although, in my usual style, I'll be very laconic and very, very sanguine when I give you my, uh, my rant. It'll be very, uh, very civilised. Um, the, uh, the ship we went on, which was uh, the uh, Steam Packets Company's uh, Mananan, is a, it's, it's known as a high, a high speed sea service or high speed ship and um, it was actually originally it was built in Australia and originally designed for the US Navy uh, it was called USS Joint Venture I didn't know that's strange that they it's odd that a warship or at least a one used by uh, the military is then converted and, and uh, adapted for use by uh, commercial shipping companies this ship uh, provides a, a service between the Isle of Man and Liverpool and um, it's very, as you may have noticed, with all the other things I said about it, its prime feature is it's very fast. It's very, very fast for a civilian transport ship. 31 knots it travels at. And to give you, put that in comparison, Ben McCree, the ship that took us, that took us from Haysham to Douglas, early on in this video, that cruises at usually 16 knots, maximum 19 knots. And um, the new ship, the new ship that's coming out called Manx Manxman, even though the lady at the terminal said it was faster than Ben McCree, is, according to Wikipedia, it has the same speed range, 16 to 19 knots. So, Mananan is far faster, and the reason it's far faster, it has a pump jet propulsor, as you saw, the big thing spitting water out the back, <clears throat> and it is a catamaran, which means it has a lower displacement, and therefore there's less water friction than a monohull, a monohull usually has a deeper displacement, there's more resistance to the water. Um, and of course, uh, this, apparently Sea Cats, as they're called, I mean, Sea Cat was a company that first designed them for, for Scotland. This, this, it was a, a company that created the first Sea Cat um, catamaran ferries, high speed ferries. I've, according to Wikipedia, they're now sort of going out of favour, which is good. Uh, but the reason is because of their apparently they have a, a big carbon footprint, which of course you know what I think about that. I think the the problem is that um, what my experience of travelling on that ship yesterday, or if you can call it a ship, a movable bridge, more like it. Um, it sort of illustrates. It made me aware of um, the changes in sea travel. As I say, it's 20 years since I've uh, done any sea travelling and it's and sea travelling is something I like very much. If, well, actually, it's more than 20 years. The last time I did sea travel was 2001 when I went to Ireland, so it's 22 years. I had a horrible holiday in Ireland with some horrible little man I should never have gone on holiday with, but that's a story for another time. Um, what that, sh what the Manan and, and high-speed ships like her represent to me is they take everything that I value about sea travel which I think is which is good and enjoyable about sea travel and they they strip all those things from the experience so everything good everything I like about sea travel is just taken away by that particular ship as I said last night I'd have much preferred it hello hello okay. I'd have much preferred it if I'd simply, if it had simply been like a, rather than a two and a half hour trip on that <coughs> thing, on that sea cat, we'd have had instead like a four and a half hour trip on a cruise ferry, a, a conventional monohull cruise ferry. Um, if you want to know the kind of thing I do value about, when I say I value about sea travel, it's basically the opposite of everything I told you yesterday without going into details, the things I liked about travelling by sea, which I did get on Ben McCree, is the opposite of everything that was on Manan. And, and it's um, amazing that, uh, I think sometimes people who provide these kind of services, the, the shipbuilders and the, and the lines, they don't understand their customers. Or maybe it's just me being self-centred and they don't understand customers like me. But basically, 
it's basically um, they they the purpose of ships like Manana is to get somewhere much faster. That's the purpose. And more and more ferry companies are doing this. <coughs> in doing so, they're rather like the they're rather like the producers of science fiction, you know, who do remakes of of their old, of the old movies and think the fans are going to like them when they don't understand that science fiction fans are some of the most conservative and sentimental people imaginable. And um, I suppose <clears throat> I'm I'm a person like that when it comes to to travelling by sea. And I wonder if I'm the only one. Funny enough, uh, I was watching a, a YouTube travel vlog about about. Uh, one of the longest sea journeys you can do in terms of regular service these days which is like which involves you know, vehicles which is in terms of like cruise ferries I'm talking about now and not including ocean liners I'm not including like the transatlantic liners of which I think there's only one Queen, Queen Mary 2 and um, cruises I'm talking about you know regular passenger and vehicle services like a ferry the longest one is you can actually get from Bilbao in northern Spain to Plymouth if you look on a map, that's a long way. That's a long way. And, um, and Brittany Ferries have a, a service that runs between those two ports. And they, they proudly state, <coughs> they very proudly state that, um, that they have their newest ships are very fast. And they're, they're monohulls, but they're very powerful. And they say, we can cruise up to, up to 25 knots. So that's almost 10 knots faster than your, your standard monohull. We can cruise up to 10 knots faster, and which means they can basically do the journey from Bilbao to Plymouth in just over 24 hours. Whereas previously it took a lot longer. It took maybe, I don't know, 36, 40 hours. And um, to me it's a bit bizarre that anyone would say, you know, we 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 run cruise ferries, and we and our our aim is to get you there as quickly as if you want to get to somewhere really quick, take a cruise ferry. And they are so naive, they're so incredibly up themselves and unaware of of, of people. Uh, they think in the age of air travel, where you can get to Spain, when you can get from Spain to England, from a Spanish airport to an English airport in about two hours or two and a half hours, right? They actually are so. They're so sort of like cloth-eared and blissfully ignorant that they can say, we want to get you there as quickly as possible. So we have this new really powerful ship that goes 25 knots. I mean, it's not quite as fast as the sea cats, which like say 31 knots. There's some that go up to 40 knots, which is like rocketing along. You know, that's, um, about, about 40, that's about 45, 50 miles per hour. But they actually, they actually think that... Yeah, and people, their customers are going, oh my God, I need to get you somewhere very quickly. And I know everything in society today is about getting somewhere quickly. It's about g going from one place to another place really quickly. That's what it's about. And, um, the, the, and it's sad, really, because, you know, if for many years now, people have said life, the pace of life is too fast in, sort of, in the developed West. You know, we'd rush around too much. Everything's about getting somewhere as quickly as possible. Once you're there, there's just somewhere else to rush to. And that's what I like about sea travel, because sea travel is a is a resistance against that. As I said, why why am I so obsessed with St. Helena and its airport? I've even got a portal now. I've, I've produced so many articles, I read two radio shows and videos about St. Helena Airport. I've got a portal on my main blog now, a uh, Panway blog. Because until recently, St. Helena was one of the few places in the world you actually still had to do a long sea voyage to reach. It's like six days on a ship out of Cape Town. And I'm like, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, we have air travel. If someone wants to get from Spain to Britain quickly, they can do so. If you're in Bilbao and you want to get to Plymouth, how am I going to get there really, really quickly? And I'll go to the local airport. Catch a plane. You'll be there with it. Well, suppose you have to get a plane to Heathrow, right? Heathrow or Gatwick airports, right? Just get, get to the local airport, fly to those airports, get a train to bloody Plymouth from there. Or wherever you want to go. Why can't they just leave the... Why can't they just please leave the ferries alone? Leave them nice and slow. 
Stop ruining, stop ruining this experience by making sea travel faster. Please. Just leave, please leave the ships alone. Stop, yes. Just, just understand, right, that just, just, just have, to, let's just have two types of travel, okay? You know, you have like the, <clears throat> you have the things you, if, if you, let's have two, tra the, you know, the, the travel for people who want to get somewhere quickly, which is the majority of people, which is planes, all right? And people who just want to enjoy the experience of the journey, which is for ships, it's cruise, that's what cruise ferries are for. Remember the old slogans? I used to understand this. Remember the old slogans? Why sail across the channel when you can cruise across? And now it's, no, no, you've got to get across the channel as quickly as possible. That's why we dug this massive tunnel. So because it's, it's just stupid. If, if you are a ferry operator or a shipbuilder, right, firstly, when it comes to tr getting somewhere quickly, you cannot compete with air. Right? You, you're never going to build a ship that will get you anywhere as quickly as a plane can. Never. The exception being some of these like ground effect machines, you know, um, which which are kind of really aircraft. They skim across the water, okay. And then there's a few of those, but they, you know, they're not very. They're rather dangerous, and so they're not never going to be commercially viable. You're never going to be able to compete with the planes when it comes to getting somewhere people somewhere quickly. On the other hand, there is a market for people like me who just want to enjoy the journey and make it as slow and pleasurable as possible. Because we're on bloody holiday. This isn't for work. This is holiday. If if, if it's the purpose of getting to work and back or doing something commercial I'll get the damn plane there's a there's an airport on the Isle of Man you can fly from actually from John Lennon Airport Liverpool to Ronald's Way Airport Isle of Man in, in about 45 minutes you know that's what I'll do if I want to get somewhere quickly if I'm on the Isle of Man and I'm on holiday and I just want to go home please please just give me Give me, an, uh, to get to Liverpool, please, it's just, if you look on the map, it's further, it's a longer journey than, Hay than Haysham. Haysham to Douglas is like about three quarters of the length, and it took much longer, because I was on the Ben McCree. Please, please, just leave the, sh let me have like a big, whopping monohull cruise ferry, going at, you know, 15 or 16 knots, that takes like four or five, five hours to get there, and I can go around and have fun and enjoy it the way I did on the way over on the Ben McCree, please. Let's just have, this is crazy, I know they'll say something, but we're compromising speed with that wonderful experience you like, Ben, but you know what, you've ruined that experience, because that ridiculous sea cat we were on last night was... Well, I told you what, I described it in lurid detail and I showed it to you. Hmm. All right, rant over. All right, guys, I'm leaving the Bowman Lodge early now. Uh, Jack, I'm leaving Jackie and Richard behind. Um, something's happened. It's a family situation, but I've got to get back to Oxford ASAP. So it's, it's nothing major. Yeah, everyone's safe as far as I know. It's just I have a... I have to go see my daughter and sort a few things out so I'm going to go to the station which is just down the road here and get a train to Oxford hopefully it'll get me back there early sort of like mid-afternoon um, I wasn't the plan originally <coughs> I had a plan to, to to go with Jackie and Richard all the way back to Gloucester and use my return ticket to get back to um, to get back to Oxford now I can't do that so uh, that would have got me back much later. See, it would have got me back too late. Because uh, they, Jackie and Richard have a lot of things to do on the way. They've got to, both of them, both Jackie and Richard have their own families to visit on the way down. So uh, I'm now heading to the station to get back to Oxford as quick as possible. Well, welcome to Chester Station, everyone. I'm uh, just planning a flying visit. <coughs> now, um, Chester is a place I've never been to before, but it has a fascinating uh, reputation. Not unlike York, which, of course, I did go to eventually and did a, a video all about. Maybe I'll come back here and do a video about Chester at some point. I mean, but right now, this is just a flying visit. I've stayed overnight, and I'm getting a train home uh, as quickly as possible. Um, so this video is, uh, the end of this video is not going to be what I originally planned, so <coughs> I'm, um, I'm going to have to, you know, leave a few things out and things that I was going to put in. Sorry about that, but um, I will catch up with those another day. But, um, anyway.
this train's engine is just switched off and it's just sitting here. So uh, this is the platform where my train's coming soon. So let's hope it gets out of the way in time. Okay, this, this is Crewe, a very big, complex station with about 12 platforms. I'm now heading for my connection. I've got a change at Stafford. I've got eight minutes to get my train to, to so assuming this one is on time, I have eight minutes, maybe less if it's delayed, to get my connection to Oxford. I'm tempted to jump on this one to London Euston and just change to Birmingham, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the instructions I've been given. So crew and Stafford, they said, okay, so that's what I'm doing. Um, see everyone's running around as usual. Um, I'd hope to my, my original plan was for a very leisurely paced journey south to Gloucester where I could use my return ticket to get back to I could use my return ticket to get back to um, to uh, Oxford from there this hasn't been possible because of changed the plans so now I'm heading back and there's all kinds of things I was going to do for example I was going to um, there was actually the, the as I said when I, when I arrived at Erie Cushlin you'll know that I was actually it was actually really I said how spooky the place was but you know I never experienced anything I would call spooky in that location, never. I never once experienced anything spooky. Um, but there was a spooky incident. It's not the best place to do this, but I'm gonna, I can't, as on the trains it's even more difficult, so I'm gonna have to raise my voice above the announcements. <clears throat> Something spooky did happen last night at Erie Cushlin. Um, I was not the, I didn't witness it myself, only one person witnessed it, it was Jackie. However, Jackie did, um, Jackie did actually, she did actually refer to, she did actually um, tell us all about it. She's a reliable person, I think, a reliable witness, a Bigfoot hunter. Um, But I'm not going to actually describe that. I was going to interview her about it on the journey. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get her on the Hapanmo show and interview her there. I think it's a story that she should tell herself rather than me telling it secondhand. And so what I'll do is I'll interview her on the, the Hapanmo show on Hapanmo radio at a later date to tell her about what she experienced last night here in Cushlin. And now I've got to, like I said, I hate train travel, I really do. That um, I've got to get home. <laughs> got to get home quickly. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, I'm back here at Oxford Station. There's so much more I wanted to do with this video and haven't been able to because of circumstances, but. I really have enjoyed my trip to the Isle of Man. I look forward to going back there again sometime. I hope you've enjoyed this Hapanmo TV video of it as well. Thanks for watching. Hospital Port has pride and dignity. Stop the New World Order.